Um, Noel, I think I agree with you that symbolism is certainly not enough, but um, the idea of a declaration of Indigenous recognition might make sense in a country like the US where documents like the Pledge of Allegiance are part of their culture here. Um, according to Professor of Constitutional Law, Anne Twomey, if substantive rights are sought, they should be included in the text of the Constitution. How can we gamble that the proposal for a declaration will change anything for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people when there is so much that is in desperate and urgent need for change? I think Professor Anne Toomey has uh, produced a draft of a potential provision for an Aboriginal body, a constitutionally recognised Indigenous body that would have the role in the Constitution of providing advice to the Parliament and to the Executive Government the Prime Minister, under Professor Toomey's drafting, would have the responsibility of tabling the advice with both houses of this parliament so that Indigenous people have an active say in the laws and policies that apply to us who represent only 3% of the Australian democracy. How could that not be of great practical benefit in tackling the kinds of problems that you're alluding to. Of course it will. At the moment, our voice is zero. And our voice has been zero since 1901. This is not just about the declaration outside the Constitution. The substantive provision is the provision that Professor Toomey has now drafted, which would provide for this nationally recognised constitutional body that would have a modest but profound role in providing counsel to our lawmakers. So, so no voting power, no senators um, with powers um, put in place, but a body that exists outside of parliament merely to advise. Dr Lang, in her essay on Magna Carta, um, produced by uh, uh, recently um, as part of our, our celebrations here, pointed out that the origins of Parliament are in the concept of the duty to provide counsel to the monarch. The duty to provide counsel, which of course evolved into a right to be represented uh, uh, in Parliament and so on. This idea that Indigenous Australians, as an extreme minority, we should have a voice nevertheless. We're excluded from the democratic structures simply because we are such a small minority. And yet we are a special minority in that we were the people here before the coming of Europeans. Just because we are only 3% of the country, doesn't mean that we shouldn't have a voice to the parliament. It would be a, a voice that would not be easily ignored. At the end of the day, parliament could say we don't listen to that advice, but of course it would be salutary advice. Um, 